my name's Danny Roberts, mostly known by majority of my mates and majority of our clients actually is Squeak. I'm a boat builder from WA and we essentially just rebuild and build boats. I guess mainly my passion's always been boating since I was a child, so I think it's just sort of embedded into my blood since then. So the, uh, the old reef runner, she's 1980s, so she's an old girl. A few mates and I decided to essentially purchase it and rebuild it. She took a fair bit of love. She was pretty barren at the start. We essentially purchased the boat. It actually had a jet drive in it when we started. We tore everything out of it and then we thought, well, we'll keep it, see how it goes. And pretty much a complete from the ground rebuild up. We started just sort of trying to do a basic project and then essentially turned into creating a showpiece of, I guess, the sort of works and sort of build quality sort of things we can do. Just got a fair bit of structure put back into it. We fully built the whole thing out of Thermolite, so all the structure core within the entire vessel is Thermo. Um, we initially started with a 454 big block Chevy in it. And we re got that rebuilt and rebuilt a fair bit of ourselves. It ran well, ran the same top speeds as the current engine we have in there, but the fuel usage was just uh, I think to get to Roto here would have been, here and back would have been 250 litres. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like it would just burn the fuel. It doesn't have a gearbox in it when it's, it's actually direct drive to the gear, uh, to the, to the jet. So it's always loaded no matter what. So essentially it will burn a little bit more fuel in neutral, but not a lot. Chatted to one of the main Mercury guys here called Mark Shorto and he recommended running the 370HO Mercruiser fitted all that into the boat. That did save us a lot of coin on fuel. So funnily enough, I think I did the maths on it and if I used the boat, I think after two years, it would have paid the same amount that it would have cost in fuel. Yeah, it's been going real well. I probably don't use as much as I should. I'd love to use it a bit more. We've took, took it on some awesome adventures to the Abrolhos and that sort of stuff. So in areas where it really shines, just being a jet. You know, I've had six people diving off it, full of gear. We're just going 30 knots comfortably over all the reef skimming sections, not even worried about it. Get to the quickest dive spot, can go have, have a spear right there and it's just been elite. So I guess I really like the reef runner layout. I knew they had a reasonable dead rise angle so they were pretty reasonable on our coast here in WA because it's pretty average at times. But I was struggling to find something around the 21 foot range that was wide enough to suit the amount of activities we do. I love the Hanes and they absolutely destroy it, the Hanes 19s and that sort of stuff, like they're weapons in the sea. But I just wanted something a little bit, little bit wider so it could actually accommodate the activities we did. Really wide beam for a 21 footer. So we've got tons of storage in there. It just has so much space for such a really small compact boat, I think. And I think that's what draw, like, drew me toward the Caribbean Reef Runner. So, and I still think they're one of the best hulls going now. I mean, if someone's building them brand new, I think they would sell like hotcakes. Yeah, so we've got a Vetus Maxwell um, windless anchor winch. Goes back to essentially the, um, I guess the windscreen and hardtop area. So the windscreen and hardtop, we were really torn between how to do it because the deck height and the orientation and dimension of the boat, we are really struggling to get the head height in the vessel without ruining essentially the structure. I didn't want it to look like a Pope mobile and be really vertical right off the windscreen. I wanted it to all sort of flow in. The geometrics of that probably took a surprising amount of time just to get it right, get the angles correct and get all the framing done well and then have the hard top actually look, or the soft top actually look like it's going to flow into the boat. It's all aluminium structure, all welded in and then painted on top of that. But the alley's like to get the, I guess, windscreen and side screens so they actually flowed with the boat i'd say it took a lot more time than it should have going further back from that we've just essentially got two large keel wells in the hull the gunner rubber if i'm being honest absolute asshole. I, I regret doing it but i don't regret doing it it's one of those things and i guess we've moved back after that we vacuum bagged uh, queensland red cherry onto the transom so fully vacuum bag that in with epoxy, skin laminate over the top, and then essentially put about 16 layers of all wood clear over the top of that. So it was a bit of a process, but I feel like it does stand out and gives the boat a bit of a marker. And I feel like that's probably one of the larger noticeable things that people seem to notice on the boat, funnily enough. So 
Everyone seems to ask who's the sticker. It isn't, it is the solid wood cherry veneer. But, um, and then I guess behind that, the marlin board. We call it the mullet board because it's a bit oversized. <laughs> Uh, we just want to be able to have somewhere to sit on and get ready in our dive gear and have a bit of a platform to stand on instead of it just being a small, small little bill area and then not have the space on afterwards. And my theory was if we make it oversized and ruin it, I can cut it back a lot easier than I can build it on. So we ran with that and it's been awesome since. So. Oh, I'm not sure I want to go through the name for being honest. I'll, I'll simplify it. It's, it's called Jeffrey. So she's called Jeffrey, and we essentially stole the name off the movie, Get Him to the Greek. So if you watch that movie, you'll understand. That's probably about as fast through as I'll go. It's an odd performer, for being honest. It probably taught me more than any other boat I've ever driven in a sea state by a country mile. The reason because of that is because it's, it's not a light boat. It's not extremely heavy, but it's solid. So. It punches through things, but it'll get on an edge a little bit because it's a jet and it'll just sort of waver a little bit, you know, it won't actually, it's, it's almost taught me to let go of the steering wheel and just let the hull do the, do its job. I mean, I feel like being a jet, you compromise a fair bit on fuel economy and performance in a sea state, but what you lose in that, you gain in mobility and then massive gain when you go to somewhere that is like the Abrolhos Islands or a reef bound area that you need, you know, you can spend 30 to 40 minutes going around reef sections where you can just, on that thing it just goes straight over them. So it is, it is absolutely elite in those sort of, those sort of areas, but for me honest, the jet does lose a bit of performance when it comes to fuel economy and it loses a little bit when it's in like when you're trying to really punch through a sea state, instead of it actually trying to punch through and go over it, because I feel like the jet's sucking in, it's trying to do this a lot. So to counteract that, I actually custom built a central hydraulic trim tab. So a central hydraulic cav plate. I don't think you guys have seen it yet actually, it's, um, it's a bit odd. It's custom built directly beneath the jet unit. It puts a full cavitation plate down as a central trim. So there's two trim tab switches on the dash and even as a very accomplished boaty, you'd still have to learn to drive it. So it's taught me a lot, but I love it. It's weird. You can do a lot of weird shit with it, if I'm being honest, that you wouldn't usually do. But then sometimes you need to do it when you're diving with people and you're right near a reef bank. And I've literally just, I mean, in WA they've been a few guys have been caught up with a few sharks, like close by, right on the edge of a reef bank, backed onto it. And I can just go in there at 20 knots, turn it 180 degrees, and back them right up, and they can get straight on the marlin board. So it is pretty amazing in that sense. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a different kettle of fish. It turns on a dime, to the point of if someone just turned the wheel as hard as they could, they'd probably break ribs or something. Like it's, it doesn't cavitate, it holds the water like which is a big thing with jets that can be an issue sometimes i mean it just it'll bank your corner like you wouldn't believe it's a bit of an odd one when you're spinning it in circles and that sort of thing it does sort of tend to whip you around and it it doesn't skip a beat i mean i'll i'll give that to the mercury engine guys they you can put that thing to the test and it just even today i was revving the hell out of it when i was just in reverse and that sort of stuff and it just no issue at all I love it a bit, so I love the jet, but we're on a pretty decent stretch here to most of the waters we get to. I'd probably put a pot on it and run an outboard. Fuel efficiency wise and efficiency through the water would probably be a better option. I'm not quite sure on the beam, I, that slipped me to today actually, but um, yeah, she's 21 foot, but with a pot on the back, it's three foot on the back of that, so it's 24 over the overall. Yeah, so we got, uh, we got a bit lucky with the day, weather-wise, that's for sure. I went for a quick dive, which was good. We got a few craze and shot a couple of skippies for a bit of sashimi, uh, which Leah's going to chef up for us for sure. Then I pulled up into the lovely Bay of Thompson's here in, at Rotnest. 
done chefing up a few starters, which should be good. We'll get into those. And then, yeah, hopefully he's got lunch for it sorted soon. But yeah, the Roto weather has turned it on. Thank you.